Welcome to another episode of Little Talks, your weekly dose of marketing news and insights from Littlefield Agency. This week, we've we found a, a new corner of the office that's not under construction. There's only a few that aren't. It's a great corner, too. And uh, we're in the diner where the ping pong table usually sits, and Brandon has set up uh, a booth and a table, and it's a, real, it's a pretty good setup, good, good temp setup. It's worth looking at the, uh, if, if, you, if you're listening on Spotify, go to the- Head um, over to lowfieldagency.com, you'll see it. Yeah, it's not under, uh, it'll be the latest and greatest podcast, but anyway, I actually walked in this morning and really liked this view. Yeah. Um, behind us is our inside joke wall. Yeah. We're, we're there's sit- some great ones from over the years. We're talking about redoing it because there's so many new inside jokes over the last three years. Do you know when you go to the re- you go to a restaurant and it's you and another it's your, you and your wife and another couple? What is the sitting strategy in that situation, Sam? Oh. Do you go across from your wife or next to your wife? I go next to my wife, husband across from okay. me, wife across from Tara. Okay, so you're talking now, to the other male. Now I got a question for you. Okay. If it's just you and Carrie on a date <laughs> night, do you do this right here side by side? Carrie would love it if I did side really? by side, but I don't. I want to look. I want to <laughs> no. look at her directly. So, so I'm always sitting across from her. So when I see, no, and again, if if you're listening and you're a couple that does this, we are not judging you. I am no. not judging you, but I couldn't imagine. Hi, Wait, honey. How was your day? So you don't sit next to Tara. Absolutely not across. But you had no because, problem doing it to me and getting right up next to me, shoulder <laughs> to shoulder, at the beginning of the podcast. Hey, okay. I, was, I was forced to. What do you want me to see? Want everyone, no one wants to see the back of my head. There's not much hair there anymore. Goodness gracious. Well, let's come back to another edition, our second episode of season three, Little Talks with Littlefield Agency. Steve Rube, Sam Littlefield, we're excited to be here today. It is Wednesday, January the 10th. Yeah. Already going by quick. Yeah, um, going by. we got a great topic to you at, uh, today, a timely topic um, with everything that's going on in this new year. We do have uh, yesterday, I guess you weren't there. I'm so sorry. You would have loved it. I've been there before. We have a new client. We announced it, <laughs> it uh, in December, Philbrook Museum of Art here in Tulsa. Uh, it's not every day that we get to work with a backyard brand is what we call it, a, you know, a Tulsa or an Oklahoma brand. And uh, we signed Philbrook and they offered their space. And the cool thing is, Rupa, I've never done this before. Philbrook has closed the first two weeks of the year. And every, every year. Every year. Hmm. And it's an opportunity for them to clean, make updates, uh, potentially you know swap out some new art, their collection. So their director of communications, Jeff Martin, has his idea, um, offered the team that is working on the Philbrook account, there's about 10 of us. And we went over there and we got to work from Philbrook by ourselves yesterday. We had the whole museum to ourselves. We, uh, some of our team got there at 10, I, didn't, I wasn't able to get there until 11. Jeff gave us this amazing tour for about an hour, hour and 10 uh, before we had lunch. And uh, we brought in uh, some sandwiches and then we, he said, hey, our team's in meetings. You guys have free reign until 5 p.m. We walked the gardens. We walked all, just getting the ins and outs. We're, we're doing these, uh, r- some really cool creative campaigns uh, for Philbrook that we'll present here in the next month or so. But I've, you know, Night at the Museum. You remember that movie, Ben yeah. Stiller? Yeah, yeah. We had a day at the museum. Yeah. That's what that's what my 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 social t- caption was. Was it Dante's Museum? museum. I, yeah. <laughs> Did I Dennis steal that? Phil Brook Littlefield edition. Yeah, I was literally doing a Ben Stiller for you. Oh my yeah. gosh. Anyway, for those that know of Philbrook, it's amazing. Um, and that there's a really unique opportunity because what do you think of when you think of a museum? Well, I, look, I, that's unfair for me to answer because I've never thought of Philbrook that way. I think it is a cool place. And, and well, exactly, they're, they're doing movies on the lawn. They're you know they're doing special. They events. have so many kid events. Yes, and, and there's it's, so it's, many people because when historically, if you think of the Met, right, yeah. the Guggenheim, you think very uppity, sophisticated. Oop, can't get you know. There's ropes by the painting. I can't get too close to. Oh no, it's a. I mean, it's it's a it's an old it's an old oilman's house, right? Exactly. That, yeah. That, that they've yeah. converted to music. It's incredible. There, the art in there's incredible. Every time Carrie and I go, we find and see some some corner that's new that we we spend a lot of time in. Well, and we learned we learned so much about it. So uh, early 1930s, Wade Phillips built that house mm-hmm. for four million dollars in 1931. What a Four, I mean, What's that in today's dollars? Oh, my good Lord. We should look that up, but it's insane. I mean, he had everything imported from Italy. He fell in love with Italy. Yeah. But the interesting thing is, and I did not know this, they lived in that house for less than a decade, 
and the Phillips became obsessed with California and moved over to uh, Bel Air. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just some fascinating information. We got to see some ins and outs of the museum that not everybody gets to see on a daily basis. So Jeff, thank you um, for the team. Thank you. That was just a, a wonderful day and a unique opportunity. Yeah, and um, I think Brandon and I and Brenda have a secret f project for Philbrook in the spring, perhaps. What? Maybe, yeah, we, we don't want to ruin uh, it. We have uh, maybe something special uh, coming for there. Brandon's been really patient with his face, watching you slap the table. Oh, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So um, I'll, I'll, he, he never uh, wants to give us direction here, but I'll, I'll I could. Brandon told mind. me right before, he's like, hey, will you watch the uh, tapping of the table? I just get excited. Yeah, he Sorry, Well, it happens. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move table. my hands down here. Uh, secondly, our boy, Mike Simmon from Grasshopper is coming down tomorrow. He was He'll supposed be to be here uh, yesterday, but there's some wild, dude, Trent sent me, I think they got eight to 10 inches. Yeah, Lots there of was snow up north. Heavy snow. Um, it'll be our first Mike meeting of the year. We love having Mike here. Uh, he might be listening to this podcast on his drive down because he's got an early morning ahead. But Tell him where he's going to eat. We are going to Bishop Quigley, Mike, and it <laughs> is freaking awesome. I went there on Friday, straight out of the 1800s, Irish Scottish pub, um, no TVs, amazing food, best fish and chips I've ever had in, this, in the sense of Tulsa, um, and then great beer which we won't be drinking because it'll be lunchtime. Two uh, blocks from my house. Two blocks, from, that, and that is the that is the crazy thing. Two blocks from <laughs> Rube's house. This is Rube's home away from home. Sam wants it to be so. He, he's asked me about it every day for two weeks. If there was a neighborhood pub in my neighborhood, I'd be there every night. Just, just, a, just a Guinness to, you, to cap off. You can have my neighborhood pub, we can share it. God, that is so cool. So Mike, we're excited to see you. Safe travels, my friend. Um, yeah. Ready to kick off 2024. Speaking of 2024, we have one topic today. And Brandon, we would let you Introduce topic number one and the only topic of the day. Yes, Roop. Take it away, baby. This is a big one. So it's, it's huge. Um, we've talked about for a couple of years, I think it was one of the very early season one that you, I don't think you can get anymore because we got rid of them. <laughs> season one podcast. We Actually, talked Philip migrated them. Yeah, we'll see. Some of the early podcasts, we were talking about Google phasing out cookies. And the, and this was two years ago. The cookie-less future, as we called it. Was it was a big, scary thing. They announced it. It had to do with some privacy concerns, I think primarily driven by places like Europe and California. Yep. Um, and, you know, people want to have control of their privacy. I get that. So um, they announced they were getting rid of cookies and uh, offered no solution. No, no what, what was next after cookies. Just we're getting rid of them, and we'll come up with something. The industry will figure it out in the next few years. Um, some of that's been true. We've talked a lot about first-party data as a solution to that. When you control your own data and you can track your own users when they're on your site, that's fine. It's kind of the, the cookies that follow people around that they don't like, that uh, privacy advocates don't like. Marketers kind of do like. That's how we know if you've seen things, how we follow we love up. The cookies. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into um, into that that makes it kind of a big deal. So announcing they were going away was was kind of frightening for a lot of folks, but... We've been following it this entire time. Um, Chris, we, Chris we, Kaiser, our analytics uh, guru, has been on top of this from since, day one. since day one. Yeah. Oh, and here's the thing, right? Uh, you think about all the iterations and changes over the years in the in the world of marketing. We marketers and tech platforms find a way to still get you the results that you need, and that's oh. what we want to talk about today. Things change. So the, the, it, it had been a few years since we'd really heard a, a, any new announcements on this, and right before Christmas, I, I sent this a link to this as soon as I saw it to Chris and said, Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's sure. going to affect wow. him quite a bit. Poor Chris. I, and, and, and editor's note, we tried to get Chris to be on the podcast today, <laughs> and um, it just wasn't going to happen. Well, and I tell, said, if there's ever a topic to have you on for, this was it. Rupe and I were at his desk uh, two days ago, and he was like, hey, man, I'm going to go ask... Chris, if you want to be on the podcast, I was like, I wouldn't waste your time. Chris doesn't want to be on the podcast. Yeah, no, I'm not. it's Sam. Like, how unseven of you yeah, on the Enneagram? It, it was a waste of anyway, five about minutes. Five minutes later, he comes back and goes, "You're right." I yeah, said, yeah, I could have told you that. I didn't so, tell you that. what Google announced it, uh, is that the cookie phase out has officially begun, um, and it began specifically for Google Chrome. So, if you're a Chrome user, I'm a Chrome user. Oh yeah. Um, Safari and you know Apple Safari browser has already in, in, in put a ton of privacy uh, yep. restrictions on on that that browser. Um, even to the point when I use it sometimes, I'm like, come on, I, I need, <laughs> I, I loosen up. I need this internet to know this information. I just want to get through this checkout process or whatever. But, uh, oh, look, there he is. Hey, hey Chris, come on hey, in. Hey, no, hey, you he's walking the man? other way. He started to walk into the studio. <laughs> God, boy, he's scary. Look at him. He's waving <laughs> by. Wanted. All right. Anyhow, so Safari already had a lot of this stuff in place, and uh, 
Google Chrome announced that in January, first part of January, they would start um, phasing out cookies to Chrome users. And they, they started testing this to 1% of all Chrome users. 1% of the millions and millions and millions and maybe even the billions of people that use that browser well, is, a, say, is a big number. 3.2 billion there internet users on Chrome. I just looked that up. So what's 1% of that? 300,000? 300 million. 300 million? I, math is not for me. Um, it's a big number. So 1% of that, and they're, they're still kind of doing no, some that's testing. that's 10%. Three, 3 billion, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not your, <laughs> not your three. strong suit either. <laughs> 30 million. <laughs> if only we had calculators nearby. That's why we're marketing. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's why we're marketing, right. So, like, anyhow, it's a big number. It's 1%, and they're doing some kind of testing with it um, is, is what's going on. Well, and here's something important to note, and Chris brought this to our attention last week. There's a lot of, I don't want to call it clickbait, but there were a lot of articles, and their point was, it's a cookie feature now. No, it's 1%, right? Yeah. And you look at this, activated by 1% of a randomly selected group of Chrome users globally. And we have known this since day one, mm -hmm. July of 2024. Q3 kicks off in a cookie They expect it to be rolled out to every Chrome user by, Chrome. Uh, by the, but, but sometime in Q3. And we almost sent something to our clients last week. He's like, Chris, we need to do it. He's like, no, man, podcast about it. Send it out. We're gonna. Uh, our clients will get this. I won't email. be on the podcast to help you with it. But yeah, definitely <laughs> do it on the podcast and we'll... <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's so true. Um, but Rube, talk to us about this is going to happen. Yeah, we've been preparing that for this. We've known about this for the last couple of years. What are we doing as an agency with our B two B clients to it is say, hey, it's okay that this is the world so, that we're living in. Yeah, so there's a few things to kind of kind of know or think about here. Um, one, we've you're right, we've known this is coming. Um, there is some, you know, I don't want to say there's a way around the cookie deal because there's not, but We've been saying since day one of this, gather your first party data now. Yes. Get yourself a CRM system like Salesforce or HubSpot or what whatever you need and grow your own database. When you control the data and understand your users one to one, it's it's a better experience for them and, and a lot and we better can, we experience can for you on that on our client front yeah. and through our agency. Absolutely. Like that's that's really the, the to, for me, because that's I'm the CRM guy, so that's what I'm going to say. And Chris isn't here to defend it, but I think he agrees with me. Yeah. And I see a lot of in the CRMs ways that you can use those audiences in your ad, uh, in in your uh, Google ads and Facebook ads and things like that. So, um, yeah, that's probably the primary thing to look at right now. Uh, I, I want to point out a few things. I, I I had to do a little more research on this one because it kind of happened. Yeah, I like it, the bold on this. Paper oh, you do. Today. Our script yeah, doesn't really have nice. bullets as bold lines this week. Um, when it, when it dropped, it was not a surprise, but it was kind of like, oh, well, it's here. And I figured, uh, oh, probably in March. No, it's when you get back from Christmas break. <laughs> we're, we're doing Happy this. Happy New Year. Yeah, it happened January 4th. Um, so there was an article in Ad Age I was reading about this. Hmm. And uh, there was a one agency buyer in there who um, who is not part of the test. He's not part of the 1%. But he, he felt like he wouldn't expect to see any major impact on this until at least 30% of cookies were depreciated. Hmm. Um, that could be next month. I mean, we don't know when this number is going to go from 1% to 10% to 30 to 40, but they're going to, it's not going to go from one to a hundred. They're going to, I would imagine, gradually ramp it up between now and Q3. Um, Google said, uh, what's it say? Google's about 75% there in terms of what it needs to supply the industry, including better documentation, and improved features. 75% is not uh, that's a C, right? Is that right? <laughs> so that's not a great grade. And nope. that, that's been one of the big criticisms, I think, of this whole process and the cookie-less future in, in Google is they haven't really offered a lot of great direction. They've offered some direction. And I think they're hoping the industry figures the rest out. A lot of folks in this article were surprised that hadn't happened. There wasn't like um, a replacement to the a technical replacement for the cookie. Um, it's just kind of what it is. One guy said, uh, you know, measurements will break. And that's entirely possible. I think when we talk about breaking, does it mean break is in terms of you're going to get no data at all anymore? No. I think what it means is data that you're going to get is going to be smaller and smaller. If you remember, if anyone that's ever spent any time in Google Analytics will attest to this, it's a sample data set. It's, 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 telling, it's taking a small sample of your data and kind of um, extrapolating that over uh, you know, a, a known universe and giving you a number. It's not like I click the link and then immediately that one click got reported back. It's, it doesn't really quite work that way. So measurement's never really been a full 100% yep. there. It's yep. always like, you know, it's apples to apples, but those apples are not a full barrel of apples. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. 
Edit that later, Brandon. I see, I see where you're going, though. You do? Okay, cool. So um, one of the things that they had mentioned, uh, this guy is uh, a tech platform called 33 Across, said programmatic measurement was founded on third-party cookies, so we can expect to see data errors moving forward. And those are the kind of things Chris is looking to figure out ways around right now. He, like I said, I expect him to be uh, very, very busy this year, <laughs> well, <and laughs> which he always is, but like this is going to add quite a bit to his plate. It's a good point on the programmatic front, which is you know a, a huge huge opportunity. We I talk to a lot of B2B prospects, A, that aren't doing much media in general, B, that mm-hmm. don't really know much about programmatic advertising. And as we figure this out, and, and we will, and they will as well, um, it, it is important as part of your strategy on top of what you just alluded to in the sense of CRM. Um, it, it absolutely is, it has to be in play for when this cookie list world happens in July, 100%. Of this year. I'll add one more thing, because I've been thinking this. I don't know if I've said it on a podcast or not, but I, I've been thinking this for the better part of a year now. Um, I think the industry is going to have to rethink some of the historical benchmarks and metrics it uses. That's a good point. So That is a very good point. You know, I think, yeah. you know, for a long time, we, we would say, oh, well, it's all about impressions, impressions, impressions. Well, to a degree, but really at the end, it's about your conversion off those impressions, right? Dude, so perfectly s- said. So some of that stuff, some of the, the, the links between impression and conversion are going to break here. We've got to find ways to reconnect those. But we may have to actually relook at how the metrics are or even applied. Like you can only deal with the data you're given <laughs> in a way. So again, first party data helps with a lot of that, but the first party data is not going to be your only source. There's going to be other things out there. So the way we kind of look at an overall um, analytics package or campaign report or um, you know website analytics, whatever that is, it's possible some, some of the terminology and yeah. metrics are going to shift. And I, I have no idea what those are going to look like right now. Um, well, I, I got to give you, I gotta give you some credit here, Rube. Um I see RFPs. We've had previous clients. Oh, how, how does that compare to industry benchmarks? Who cares? Yeah. Is, you, is your is product moving? Yeah. Are people converting? And it's such a good point. We're going to figure this out. It's 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 the next iteration of the marketing world that's always evolving, and it's just we're it's part of the world that we live in. And but at the end of the day, are you moving product? Are your sales increasing? That's the whole reason we got in business forty four years ago. Oh wow. But it, I mean, it's, it's the truth. So as, as you think through this, right, absolutely, we need to be mindful of it. Absolutely take care of your CRM and and, and nurture that and get more data, as much data as you possibly can. Um, but at the end of the day, from a lead generation standpoint, from awareness to conversion, how are we converting, reconverting, cross-selling your customers? And that's what it comes down to. Yep. It's so a great we'll, point, We'll Rube. probably be talking about this more as the year goes on, as we get closer to Q3, and as things become more clear. And maybe, we give them enough heads up. We put Chris Kaiser right in between us here. Boy, think, he'd love that. You know, I think we're going to have to trick him into like, well, we're doing an agency photo shoot and we're just kind of doing different groups of people and, and you're going to sit with me and Sam. Or maybe and, like, you know, turn on the cameras, quick, Brandon. <laughs> yeah, it'll be something like that. <laughs> and, we, and we trap him right in the middle. Yeah. Boy, this is this would be Chris's this hell. This is it. Yeah, right it, <laughs> this would be Chris's hell. <laughs> <laughs> he would be very not happy. So um, anyway, that's what we got for you today. It's timely. It's good. It's interesting. Um, and it is obviously going to be talked about more as we make our way through the rest of the year. You've probably heard about it. You may have seen a headline and freaked out. Don't worry. It, it's it's not the end of the world. It's the end of cookies. And we knew it was coming and you're you're not alone. Yeah. None of us are alone in this. That's that's the good news. That's exactly right. Yeah. Brandon, I've been very conscious. I'm not touching the table and it's been hard, but we've done it, baby. We're good. Okay. We will see you next week. Thank you for listening as always. And uh, we'll catch you then. All right. Adios. And that's a wrap. We hope you've enjoyed our little chat and found ways to grow your own marketing strategies. Remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and follow us on social media at Littlefield Agency.